I won't go through the history. Dr. Gabriel Elizaro, he gave the principles of uh, distraction osteogenesis. Okay. He standardized the protocol. One second. So basically, distraction osteogenesis is that uh, we uh, pause the bone healing process at the fibrous callus formation stage. Okay. And uh, <coughs> this fibro callus uh, stage is uh, you can say it is a, a little malleable it, it we can stretch it okay zyada stretch nahi kar sakte there is a limit so uh, the limit is also given by dr gabriel elizaro so isme basically the concept is in the fibrocallus stage we have the new uh, blood vessel formation new angiogenesis so <coughs> when we stretch this fibrocallus uh, slightly 1 mm per day so these uh, new blood vessels they are torn there is a micro trauma to this callus so waha pe there is new bleed, uh, blood clot formation and that <coughs> clot formation leads to another uh, fibrous callus formation so this uh, process is kept on uh, in active stage this fibrous callus stage okay <coughs> once we have uh, achieved the desired length we fix the two segments and we allow the fibrous callus to ossify and get converted into bony callus okay so the principles given by uh, elizaro were oste osteotomy with minimal periosteal stripping so the blood supply to the bone should be uh, there should be uh, least disturbance to the uh, blood supply to the bone and then we have the latency period now <coughs> we have cut the bone we have uh, performed the osteotomy of the bone two part mein usko divide kiya hai now we are going to wait for some time because we need the fibrocallus formation to occur first okay and that uh, depending on the blood supply and the age of the patient uh, and the uh, size of the bone uh, the latency period it is variable okay so depending on the bone formation blood vessels the latency period can be 3 days 5 days 7 days or 10 days also okay so latency period is basically we allow we don't do anything we just fracture the site and we keep uh, keep them immobilized we allow the fibrous callus to form that is the latency period then comes the distraction phase in in, uh, in distraction phase uh, we have the fibrocallus that is formed now we start pulling the two segments apart using the distractor device uski photos dikhaunga main aage so in distraction we have two things uh, one is rate and second is rhythm rate is the amount of <laughs> sorry the amount of movement that we give the traction force that we give on the bone okay so ideal rate is 1 mm uh, 1 mm per day 1 mm per day we are going to pull the two segments apart okay that is the ideal rate now that is also dependent on the size of the bone segment and the blood supply okay and depending on the osteo osteotomy site also so if the bone segments they are very small then the rate will be less zyada pull nahi karenge we will pull it at a slower rate <coughs> if the segments are larger we can slightly increase okay so another example is uh, if uh, uh, i've shown you the image last time bilateral sagittal split osteotomy cut now in that osteotomy the two segments are overlapping they're not end to end contact they are overlapping so in this case uh, we can increase the rate to 2 mm per day and the rhythm is <coughs> how much we divide this rate into uh, throughout the day okay now basically rhythm ideally continuous rhythm is uh, is preferable uh, Continuous means 1 mm है, we are pulling it 1 mm 24 hours में. Now imagine continuously pull करते जा रहे हैं, we are achieving 1 mm movement in 24 hours. That is actually uh, impossible to achieve by a human. इतना slowly हम कर भी नहीं पाएंगे. We can use machines and uh, robotics for that, but patient के लिए वो पूरा gadget uh, लेके घूमना it's not uh, very practical. So what we do is we divide the rate into uh, a few parts. Like for example we give 0.5 mm movement in the morning 0.5 in the evening that is twice a day 0.5 mm or 0.25 four times a day <coughs> that is the rhythm so now once we have achieved the desired length now we are going to <coughs> immobilize the two segments and we are going to allow the fibrous callus to get converted into bony callus okay ossification occurs so this is the uh, distraction osteogenesis process in short <coughs> so yeah so we give the osteotomy cut we allow the fibrocallus to form and then we start pulling it apart so we get a fibrocallus formation we stretch 
फाइब्रोकैलेस्टिन लेंथ भी बढ़ती जाती है एंड देन वी अलाउ इट टू ऑसिफाई वी अलाउ इट टू गेट कन्वर्टेड इन टू बोनी कैलस ओके सो दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑस्टोटॉमी वॉज परफॉर्म एंड फाइब्रोकैलस दिस वॉज स्ट्रेच द टू बोनी सेगमेंट्स ओके दिस इज द टिबिया बोन नॉट मैंडुबल हाँ सो वी कैन सी वी कैन स्टार्ट सींग द ऑसिफिकेशन इन द बोन सो आइडली कंसॉलिडेशन इन कंसोल्ट when do we decide that bony formation has started uh, usually it uh, the on the radiograph we start seeing the uh, uh, presence of uh, ossification in at around 6 to 8 weeks okay and uh, how do we know that there is ossification we take gradual radiographs uh, periodically we take radiographs of the patient okay so we start seeing cortical outline oh, one second so you start seeing cortical outline of the bone so that is how we know that cons consolidation has occurred now we can remove the fixation device okay <coughs> so i'll remove this this ne last time attend nahi kiya i'm not going to oh, okay i'll i'll explain this so basically if we keep the rate of the uh, rate of the distraction at a uh, higher level what happens is if we pull it apart the fibrous callus is not able to regenerate at uh, at the required rate so what happens is it gets thinning uh, there is thinning down of the fibrous callus so now when we allow it to ossify we are going to get less amount of bone okay so we need to keep in mind the blood supply and the size of the bone and depending on that we keep the distraction rate <coughs> so this was if we keep the distraction rate at higher uh, number okay if we uh, distract the segments at a slower rate what happens is uh, you remember the bo uh, bone healing process फाइब्रोस कैलस होता है उसके बाद बोनी कैलस फॉर्मेशन इज देयर बाय द ऑसिफिकेशन ऑफ द फाइब्रो कैलस सो इफ वी पुल देम अपार्ट एट अ स्लोअर रेट सो दे द फाइब्रो कैलस गेट्स टाइम टू गेट कन्वर्टेड इनटू बोनी कैलस सो इफ वी कीप द डिस्ट्रैक्शन रेट स्लोअर सो फाइब्रो कैलस गेट्स कन्वर्टेड इनटू बोनी कैलस बिफोर द आइडियल टाइम दैट वी वांटेड इट टू कन्वर्ट ओके सो जितना हमें पुल करना था उतना पुल नहीं कर पाएंगे बिकॉज़ इट गॉट ऑसिफाइड बिफोर टाइम ओके सो दिस इज द इशू इफ वी pull it at a faster rate or at a slower rate okay as i showed and told you earlier in bsso if we keep the osteotomy cut like this that the, the two segments are overlapping each other right so kya uh, hai so these are the bony uh, osteotomy cut you can see the red clot so when we pull them apart there won't be any thinning because they are overlapping so then we can increase the distraction rate to 2 mm per day okay this is dancing distraction yeah the dancing distraction yeah okay so this is the distractor device uh, who did attend ek bar dikha dete hain so basically these two uh, these two plates are used to fix the distractor device to the two segments okay and then we uh, start activating the distractor device and these two segments are pulled apart okay so we have a precise control of how much movement we want to give so this is your internal distractor device and this is how it is used so once they are placed we can activate using this activation arm and they are pulled apart okay uh, depending on the site of the distraction there are different configuration and the types of the distractor device here it is for maxillary osteotomy and uh, distraction uh, <coughs> so we have this distractor di oh. so this goes over the zygomatic bone and this plate goes over the maxillary bone and we give the cut in the leford one osteotomy level and then we pull it forward uh, these are all the different distractor devices so based on the you know, distractors can be distractor devices can be uh, uh, classified as uh, <coughs> internal or external in, uh, like internal and external uh, the part of the de distractor device that is the present uh, where the movement occurs okay so this if you remember from the previous video the movement occurs on this side okay this part is inside the soft tissue this is internal distractor okay this is the example of internal distractor now we have this device pin fixation device this is an external distractor because pins are attached to the segments and the main distractor device where the movement occurs it is outside the soft tissue i'll show you so you can see uh pin fixation is used and the distractor device is outside so this is external distractor and this is an another distractor uh, using a halo frame so internal distractors can be uh, classified as intraoral and extraoral depending on the presence of activation arm if the activation arm is outside uh, 
uh, extra oral then it is called an extra oral distractor if the activation arm is intra oral it is intra oral distractor <coughs> the dis uh, intra uh, internal distractor inter internal distractors can be further classified as tooth bone 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 and hybrid now tooth bone uh, here this is hyrax device uh, it is attached to only the teeth and uh, uh, distraction is uh, achieved whereas bone bone the distractor device is attached to only the bone not the teeth okay that is bone bone di uh, distractor device and then we have hybrid in which we have the distractor device that is attached to both bone and the teeth okay what is the advantage of hybrid is uh, let me tell you the disadvantage first of tooth bone and bone bone so basically uh, for example in bone bone so it is causing the uh, distraction at the lower border of the mandible it is applying the forces at the lower border okay now both the side we have the myeloid muscle they are pulling the in inferior border inwards so mandible slightly opens up okay so yahan pe na at the teeth level we see a v shaped deformity v shaped gap dikhega so that can be uh, avoided using the hybrid distractor because when the distractor is attached to teeth also it won't allow the v shaped playing of the arch so then we come to different techniques monofocal bifocal trifocal tetrafocal now depending on the site where new bone formation occurs now basically distraction uh, osteogenesis se kya kare we are creating new bone right we are generating new bone so basically here we cut the bone and we pull them apart so there is only one side where new bone formation is occurring okay so this is monofocal this is the example of monofocal you can see in the mandible in the body region we give a osteotomy cut and we pull the segments apart there is only one side where new bone formation occurs so that is this is also an example of uh, one second this is also an example of monofocal now then we have something called as bifocal <coughs> in this what we do is we cut a small disc okay and then we pull it apart so here we are getting a new bone formation and when this disc reaches the final the distal segment we graft this side okay so we have two sides where new bone formation occurs that is one this is the uh, side and second where we graft so we have bifocal now you get the idea trifocal mein there will be three sides where new bone formation occurs uh, this is a, uh, this is an example of bifocal you can see okay so we have this uh, in this uh, trifocal we used uh, transport disc this is called as transport disc from both the ends they both are uh, moved towards each other and in the end when they when they reach the final position we graph the area between the two okay <coughs> so also remember this when we do transport distraction and these three are example of transport distraction we move the disc okay we are transporting the disc so what happens is this end it is covered by cartilage i'll show you the video for in in the next uh, few next few slides okay so abhi ke liye yaad rakho when we use transport distraction one end is covered by uh, uh, cartilage in a structure okay so this was trifocal then we have tetrafocal at one end we we are creating two disc and on the other end we are creating only one disc so we have three sites where not three sites four sites where new bone formation is occurring okay so that is tetrafocal Uh, these are all examples of monofocal this is transport distraction bifocal uh, i have a video for that and this is tetrafocal okay now we come to this part ye sara recap hua abhi 15 minute mein okay so bifocal trifocal uh, tetrafocal they are all examples of transport distraction so we have a defect like this for example okay there is a huge defect in the mandible body region huh? so we give an osteotomy cut and we create a transport disc this is called as this segment is called as transport disc <coughs> now we attach the distractor device and also we uh, immobilize the fracture segments not the fracture segment the osteotomy segment jo bhi uh, defect ke proximally and distally hai now the advantage of using this is it is not going to allow these segments to move that is one second when we move this disc anteriorly okay now mandible is going to curve and uh, in the symphysis and parasymphysis region right so this uh, reconstruction plate is going to guide the uh, transport disc okay along the curve path if this uh, uh, reconstruction plate is not there this is going to continue straight and not follow the mandible curve okay so there are two advantages of recon plate it is go, uh, going to cause uh, it will cause immobilization of these two segments and uh, uh, it is going to act as a guide to the transport disc so we move it forward okay 
and as i mentioned earlier the uh, distal end this end of the pro, uh, transport disc it gets covered by a cartilaginous structure okay now abhi we have distracted we have a new, new fibrocallus formation in this side now what we are going to do is we are going to remove this cartilaginous structure and we are going to graft this side okay so now we have two sides where new bone formation is there okay this is bifocal samajh aaya and then we uh, wait for the ossification to occur and then we remove all this armamentarium the distractor device and the recon plate reconstruction plate okay then we have different variations of trifocal uh, different variation of trifocal that is now the defect is the same just imagine there's a huge defect that is not uh, that we are not able to manage using a uh, single transport disc what we do is in a trifocal आपने पहले जो देखा था इमेज उसमें वी क्रिएट टू ट्रांसपोर्ट डिस्क ऑन वन एंड एंड देन वी ट्रांसपोर्ट दैट इज वन एग्जांपल सो हियर व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज वी आर गोइंग टू मूव वन ट्रांसपोर्ट डिस्क एंटीरियरली ओके एंड देन वी वेट फॉर अ फ्यू डेज फॉर द हीलिंग टू अकर इन दिस रीजन एंड देन वी डिवाइड दिस ट्रांसपोर्ट डिस्क इनटू टू पार्ट्स ओके दिस इज फिक्स्ड दिस इज गोइंग टू गेट फिक्स्ड टू विद दिस एंड देन वी मूव दिस डिस्क एंटीरियरली एंड देन वी ग्राफ्ट दिस साइड ओके This is an example of trifocal because we have three sides where new bone formation is occurring. समझ आया इतना? Okay. So now we come to the indication of distraction osteogenesis. So basically, any any condition that is going to lead to a defect in bone, okay, bony defect is there. Then we are going to use distraction osteogenesis. Example in congenital we have, we have Pierre Robin syndrome, we have hemifacial microsomia. Now in hemifacial microsomia we have Uh, uh one side maxilla and mandible both are deficient so the occlusion is slanting this is something called as occlusal cant okay even this can be managed with uh, distraction osteogenesis we'll talk about this later now <coughs> we have something called as uh, treacher collins syndrome another example of treacher collins syndrome then we have uh, micrognathia then we have cleft alveolus that can be managed we can create a uh, uh, osteotomy in this region between the two teeth and we can move this tooth in this region and then we can graft this side so the defect is smaller the graft side that will be uh, uh, the side that will be grafted will be a little smaller okay then we can go for implant in this region okay then there are acquired defects that is resection because of some tumor carcinoma or cyst okay in this example we are going to in case of carcinoma we take a uh, very generous margin that is 1 cm margin is taken around the ca okay जहां तक सीए हमें दिखता है ना उसके अराउंड वन सेंटीमीटर मार्जिन लेते हैं टू अवॉइड एनी रिकरेंस ओके दिस इज अ केस ऑफ मैंडुबल बॉडी सी ए इन विच यू कैन सी देर इज अ रिसेक्शन ऑफ द हाफ ऑफ द मैंडुबल एंड सम पोर्शन ऑफ द फ्लोर ऑफ द माउथ देन वी हैव अ केस ऑफ अमिलो ब्लास्टोमा इन विच रिसेक्शन वॉज डन यू कैन सी मैंडुबल अप टू द अपोजिट साइड सेंट्रल इन साइड इज रिमूव then tmj ankylosis i showed you the pictures last time we create a gap in while managing the tmj ankylosis while freeing the freeing the mandible okay so these are the indications so remember this jitne bhi tumhare dimag mein yaad aa rahe na indication which are causing any bony defect unke naam add kar do okay then we have contraindication now this is going to be a long procedure right at least 8 weeks rahega that is for consolidation uske baad bhi the patient will have to wait for a few days for the bone to remodel <coughs> so it is going to take a lot of commitment from the patient side so patient compliance is important so suppose a patient who is not very uh, keen on compliance uh, mentally challenged patient or old old patient uh, these are not a uh, ideal candidate for distraction osteogenesis then uh, for example there is a very thin bone 2 mm 3 mm ki bone hai so when we distract that we're not going to get any good bone so that is also a, a case that is not ideal for contraindication uh, distraction osteogenesis and then suppose a patient has gone multiple surgeries in the past for bony defect and uh, there is hampered blood supply and for some reason multiple surgeries ki wajah se the bony segment the bone is uh, appearing as uh, smaller segments okay and there's no proper healing of the bone after the previous surgery then in that case is also it is not advisable to perform distraction osteogenesis <coughs> done okay so now factors affecting the success or failure of distraction osteogenesis 
so we have multiple uh, categories first is local factors uh, logically if the blood supply is not good to the site there won't be proper bone healing fibrocallus formation won't be proper bony callus formation won't be there so blood supply is going to dictate how successful your procedure is going to be infection suppose there is uh, infection of the site of your osteotomy ya fir before we start the osteotomy there is some uh, uh, osteomyelitis hai we are not going to perform uh, distraction osteogenesis in that site until unless we have managed the infection okay not only osteomyelitis uh, it, it can be space infection right so we are giving the uh, we are going to make sure that the infection is controlled first and we have the healthy bone at the site then we are going to continue with the distraction osteogenesis then we have soft tissue fibrosis okay uh, another example so the patient has undergone multiple surgeries okay uh, because of the multiple surgeries there is fibrosis of the soft tissue overlying the bone okay now this fibrous soft tissue is going to hamper the movement of the uh, bony stock that we have created okay so that is also another factor that is that you'll have to consider then we have the amount of bone available we've already talked about this multiple times radiation therapy ye bhi maine last time bola tha suppose the patient had a history of ca patient ne operate kara and the patient got the radiation therapy so radiation therapy because of that there will be and there will be reduction in blood supply of the bone right so if you want to perform distraction osteogenesis in a radiation therapy patient first of all you'll have to wait for a for 6 months first then you have to make sure that the uh, blood supply is uh, slightly increased using hyperbaric oxygen therapy if you remember osteoradio necrosis mein bataya hai so patient has to undergo hyperbaric oxygen therapy and then uske baad you can perform distraction osteogenesis okay then we have systemic factor age of the patient in young patient the bone healing is uh, any healing is faster okay the body heals at a faster rate so in a young patient the distraction osteogenesis has a higher chance of being successful as compared to an older patient any metabolic disorder that is going to hamper the bone metabolism for example uh, osteoporosis rickets osteomalacia uh, osteogenesis imperfecta these are all the condition that are going to hamper bone healing okay so we we'll have to be very careful or try to avoid uh, distraction osteogenesis in these uh, patients okay now calcium deficiency we all know calcium is important for bone formation okay bone uh, so if there the, the patient has calcium deficiency that is going to lead to hampered bone formation vitamin d deficiency vitamin d deficiency is going to lead to vitamin uh, calcium deficiency also indirectly then we have steroid therapy uh, steroid uh, they cause uh, they hamper the metabolism of vitamin d and calcium okay so they are indirectly uh, relating to calcium deficiency you can say that then we have distraction factors rate and rhythm as i told you rate zyada hoga to fir we will we'll have the thinning of the fibrocallus if the rate is slower then we'll have early ossification of the bone right then the rhythm okay suppose the rhythm is okay we are giving 1 mm movement in just one activation ek hi baar mein hum 1 mm movement de rahe hain so what happens is suppose there is a osteotomy site here we are applying 1 mm force okay so 1 mm force is not only applied in this segment dono side ko pull ho raha hai na dono side pe force ja raha hai so this segment which is uh, we have the condyle so patient might complain of pain in preauricular region because this force is transmitted to the condyle region theek hai na condyle is going to press on the glenoid fossa posterior aspect of the glenoid fossa so patient will complain for of pain <coughs> that is another thing so you have to control the rhythm of the uh, rate uh, uh, rhythm of the distraction then we have the latency period depending on the uh, bone <coughs> if we uh, if we don't allow for the fibrocallus formation to occur this is going to surely fail right so depending on the site blood supply age of the patient we have to decide on the latency period then consolidation period we already decided and length of regeneration longer the re, uh, longer the uh, bone chamber that we we want to achieve uh, higher the chances of infection because infection and complication kyunki zyada time tak procedure chalega okay so we have multiple variables all these things so now we come to just basically dekha jaye to sara distraction topic khatam ho gaya now i'm going to show you all the multiple various applications in maxillofacial region so you can see this is one side uh, micrognathia of the mandible then we have the uh, bilateral micrognathia okay this patient has bird faces along uh, with bird faces the patient will have the uh, obstructive sleep apnea because mandible is backward the tongue is when the patient sleep the tongue falls back into the throat right the tongue is going to obstruct the airway 
so when we perform the uh, osteo osteotomy and distraction osteogenesis of the patient of the mandible we bring the mandible forward along with the mandible we pull the tongue forward right so we have the opening of the uh, uh, airway so patient patient's uh, obstructive sleep apnea is relieved so then we have mandibular widening is my important concept hai. so basically we perform the osteotomy at the symphysis region and then we widen the uh, arch and then once you have created a new bone you are going to use orthodontic movement to uh, get a uh, proper ideal arch form okay so as i mentioned earlier we are going to perform osteotomy cut at the midline between the two central incisors okay now suppose is iske aage jaate so we perform the osteotomy cut uh, wherever we perform the osteotomy cut and we pull the segments we are going to get a new bone formation now remember this 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 new bone formation of whatever the new tissue is being generated it is dependent on what tissue is lying adjacent to it okay side mein kaun sa tissue hai it is also important for example we give an osteotomy and by mistake between the two teeth by mistake we uh, involve the pdl space of one tooth okay so when we distract this side so what we are going to say is we are going to see a mixture of pdl and the new bone in the side okay so it is important to keep in mind where you are placing a osteotomy cut and what tissue is lying adjacent to that okay so again if we uh, suppose in case of crowding widen kyun kar rahe hain because we have a crowding of the anterior teeth okay so there is crowding there is no sufficient space to place the cut okay and we are sure if we place a cut between the two incisors we are going to involve the pdl space of both the of one of the tooth okay so what we do is we are going to give the uh, uh, superior cut okay uh, Uh, between the canine and the lateral or whatever teeth where the space is available okay if the space is not available you are going to ask your orthodontist to create the space by tooth movement thoda sa uh, tooth ka tipping karenge and we create the space and then we give the cut okay and then we continue the cut medially and then we continue the cut in the midline okay and then we widen the uh, symphysis okay and once you create space orthodontic movement se we create the proper arch form now this is a case of uh, uh, radiographs of the case this is 8 days after the uh, osteo after no 8 uh, days after the latency period okay so you can see 8 mm space is achieved then we start seeing slight ossification in this region and then after 10 months you can see there is proper bone formation and the teeth have been moved back into the uh, the distraction site and proper arch form has been achieved okay then we have bifocal trifocal as we discussed earlier if there is a huge defect we are going to use in this case we are going to use bifocal or in this case you can go for trifocal also okay then we have neocondyle for example uh, patient ka uh, tmj ankylosis operate hua we cut the uh, condyle okay we create a gap we do a uh, do a procedure called as gap arthroplasty for tmj ankylosis so we cut the condyle now this is uh, there is no oh, amazing so कट तो देख लिया आप लोगों ने सो वी हैव अ कट वी रिमूव द कॉन्डाला हेड फॉर वाइल मैनेजिंग द एंकाइलोसिस सो लेट मी ओपन दिस सो दिस वाज द कंडीशन ऑफ द पेशेंट आफ्टर द टीएमजे एंकाइलोसिस मैनेजमेंट ऑफ टीएमजे एंकाइलोसिस सो वी कीप दिस वर्टिकल कट पैरेलल टू द पोस्टीरियर बॉर्डर ऑफ द रेमस एंड 90 डिग्रीस द हॉरिजॉन्टल कंपोनेंट देन वी स्टार्ट डिस्ट्रैक्टिंग दिस सेगमेंट अप now remember this is ka shape when we uh, start with the distraction procedure make sure we round it off okay so ideally it should be rounded off before starting the distraction procedure and then we push it upwards okay so now we have a new condyle new condyle has been regenerated okay then we have something called as maxillary distraction so we give osteotomic cuts at a leaf out one level and we distract the device and then we achieve the anterior placement of the maxilla you can see the improvement in the profile of the patient okay so hello frame can be used now this is important. I, I, i told you earlier in the indications uh, in case of hemifacial microsomia the maxilla and mandible both are deficient okay so we'll have something called as occlusal cant so what we are going to do in this patient is we are going to perform maxillary leaf out one osteotomy and on one side ramal osteotomy ramus mein osteotomy horizontal cut denge 
then we perform IMF in this uh, between the teeth. Occlusion is fine. Okay. We just have the cant. The occlusion is slanting. So what we do is we perform the cuts first, uh, Leeford one and horizontal osteotomy, and we uh, uh, do intermaxillary fixation, and then we just start with distraction only the ramus. Along with the, uh, when we activate the ramus, uh, the distracted device on the ramus, as we have the IMF uh, there, maxilla is also going to be pulled downwards, right? So we have the distracted device, Leeford one osteotomic here, ramus osteotomic here. When we pull the max, uh, the mandible downwards from the ramus region, because of the IMF, we pull the maxilla downward also. So we, we are correcting the occlusal cant of the patient using this procedure. By jaw distraction. Simple, yeah. So maxillary segmental distraction. Is my, I don't think photos. Hai. So what we do is just we perform a subapical osteotomy. We include all of the root and uh, at least five mm below the root. Okay, the bone is five mm below the root, and then we uh, distract this tooth along the arch using the arch wire, ortho arch wire used. Karte and we distract it. Uh, we push this. We, uh, apply traction force and bring this tooth in uh, closer to this area. So we have closed this area using a bone and yaan pe jo chota sa defect rehta hai, we close it using the bone graft. Okay. So this is an example of bifocal. Okay. Then we have rapid maxillary expansion. Yaad hai? Ortho mein pada hoga. So this is also an example, uh, uh, this is an example of bone bone uh, distractor device. So this may you can see the example of uh, the radiograph. Uh, this is the this is before osteotomy. This is after osteotomy and uh, distraction, and then we can see the dis, uh, distraction side, fibrocallus being ossified and bony callus is formed. Okay, so you can see the uh, increase in width of the arch, maxillary arch. Then we have something called as angular distraction. Then we have something called as alveolar distraction. This is more used in uh, implant dentistry. So basically, it is used to achieve height of the bone, alveolar bone. So suppose if we want to achieve, uh, we, we want to increase the height of the alveolar bone, we go for alveolar distraction. Let's see. So we perform cuts. Dikhega, dikhega. So we perform vertical cut. Yeah, I forgot to mention this, na? So I remember this. आपने ये तो देखा distracted devices में normal intra in, internal distracted devices में there are plates. To fix the distracted devices, right? So before performing osteotomy, you have to first mark karo the. You have to first mark the osteotomy site, and then you have to place the distracted device and make the holes. First holes karne, then remove the distracted device. Why we are why we are uh, uh, marking the uh, osteotomy site and making the holes? Because once we cut, humanly we can cause some errors. A mm, two mm, me misalignment kar sakte hain. ठीक है ना? So what we do is we create the holes before performing the osteotomy, before cutting the bone, and then we remove the distractor. Once we have performed the osteotomy, now when we place the distractor, now we are sure that जो भी साइड पे पहले था, we are going to fix the bone at the same position as before, right? So that is why we place the osteotomic uh, the drills, the drills for the plates and screws before osteotomy. Right. Okay. So this is what they are showing. Uh, so before placing the cut, they are creating the holes for the screws. Okay. So once uh, once they have created the holes, they are going to remove the distractor device and then they are going to perform the cut. Now they have they already have holes. Now they are going to perform the cut. Okay. And this is a vertical distractor. It is going to move up and down. I say. Okay, this plate is going to get attached to this part, and this plate is going to get attached to this part. तुम लोगों को दिख रहा है लैपटॉप से? Okay, now when we activate the distractor, it is going to pull apart both the segments. Okay. And hence, we achieve increased height. Fibrocallus is there, then we allow it to ossify, ossify, and we achieve a ideal bone height. Of course, फिर यहाँ पे we are going to uh, do bone grafting. अब ये ऐसे sharp रहेगा, it won't be ideal. So we perform some bone grafting. And uh, do you know why we create these holes? Okay. Directly bone के ऊपर if we place a graft, they won't, it won't uh, 
get uh, taken up by the bone. So, we create holes to induce bleeding. Okay. Once the bleeding is there and the bone graft may the blood goes and uh, mixes uh, in the bone graft and the uh, clot formation is there. That is when we get a good bone formation. So, in any bone grafting we are going to have to uh, induce bleeding. Okay. So, once the bone height is achieved we remove the distractor device. So, we come to the complication of distraction osteogenesis. Zada complications nahi hai. First is improper planning. Now, there is something called as vector trajectory jo abhi tak mainne aapko nahi bataya. So, mandible mein basically there are uh, three uh, planes. One is the body plane that is parallel to the mid sagittal plane. Okay. Mid sagittal plane jo hota mandible ke ekda exactly beech mein se jo plane ja raha hai. So, this body region is parallel somewhat parallel to the mid sagittal plane. Then we have the symphysis region that is a little curved and then uh, sorry parasymphysis that is a little uh, angulated 30 degree to around 45 depending on the patient's anatomy and then we have the uh, symphysis that is totally perpendicular to the mid sagittal plane okay which is seen here we have the uh, body region that is somewhat parallel to the mid sagittal plane then we have the symphysis and then we have the uh, parasymphysis and symphysis okay so if we are performing distraction in the body region you have to make sure that the distractor device is parallel to the mid sagittal plane. Agar aapne thoda sa bhi angulation galat rakha, instead of going straight, angle mein jayega, right? So, you have to make sure that your vector is proper, vector of the distractor device. Vector means kya, physics mein padha hoga 11, 12 mein, vector means the direction, okay? So, you have to make sure that the vector direction is proper. So, planning should be proper. Then, wound dehiscence. Now, uh, for example, again, uh, cancer yeah, osteoto uh, any CA or cis because of that there is a resection of the mandibular body region okay there is a huge defect bone soft tissue is also gone now when we take a transport disc from the uh, posterior body region and we move it forward now it is covered by the soft tissue the transport disc now we are pushing it forward there is a possibility that this soft tissue because of the pressure from the uh, transport disc it might there might be some dehiscence in the soft tissue okay so, isko how do we manage? First of all, jo wound, wound healing ka management rata hai. Irrigate it with betadine, make sure the site is clean, okay? If there is infection, manage the infection. And while we manage this inf uh, infection, the, the wound while we manage, it is not going to be managed in one day. Ho sakta hai, din, din lag sakte hai. So, what we are going to do with the transport disc? We are going to perform something called a transport, uh, dancing distraction, if you remember. We move it forward 1 mm, the next day we take it backward. Again we may move it forward, we take it backward. We keep doing this until uh, the, the soft tissue healing has completely occurred. Once the soft tissue healing has occurred, we, we again continue with the normal distraction. Then we have something called as uh, relapse. In, uh, relapse. Uh, there is something called as uh, growth spurts, patient ka job hi bada hota hai, uh, uh, with the growth spurts, right? So, if we perform distraction in a young patient, okay, jitna bone chahiye tha, utna humne create kiya and we remove the distracted device. Now, as the patient uh, grows, okay, initially it was the ideal length of the bone, but as the patient grows, the deficiency will again occur because the rest of the bone and the soft tissue is going to grow, whereas that part is not going to grow, okay. So, in such patient, we will have to overcompensate, okay. Suppose in a patient we need a 10 mm, in a growing patient we need a 10 mm of bone, okay. So, we are going to achieve around 13, 14 mm, okay. Because initially it won't look good, but once the patient's uh, growth has occurred, then that uh, overgrowth is going to get, uh, it, it is going to look normal because rest of the facial bone and musculature they have grown, okay. So, we, in case of growing patient, we will have to overcorrect the defect. So, to recap, topic ho gaya. Now we are going to just recap uh, quickly and then khatam karing. So, Elizaro principles: osteotomy with minimal periosteal skipping, latency period three, five, seven days, depending on the blood supply and the size of the bone. Then we have distraction. In that, in distraction, we have rate and rhythm. Fast, uh, uh, in faster rhythm, uh, faster rate, we are going to have thinning of the fibrocallus. Whereas at a slower rate, we are going to get ossification, early ossification of the fibrocallus. Then rhythm is there that is uh, 0.5 mm twice a day or 0.25 mm four times a day. 
and suppose we have a BSSO osteotomy. In that, we have the overlapping of the segments. Okay, osteotomy segments. In that case, we are going to we can increase the rate. That is two mm. Okay. Then we have the consolidation phase that appears within a. Oh, oh I forgot. One mm to five. All that consolidation. We start seeing the. Uh, cortical outline of the bone on radiographs. Okay, that is usually seen in six to eight weeks. Okay, so these are the basic Elizaro principle. एक बार ये पता चल गया आप सारी चीजों में लिखो. जैसा मैंने सारे examples दिए. In case of maxilla, bilateral, bimaxillary osteo, uh, bimaxillary distraction osteogenesis, neocondyle, ramal height increase करना है. Whatever example you can think of, इसके बाद आप बस add कर दो diagrams के साथ. That's more than enough. Okay. Now advantages of distraction osteogenesis soft tissue growth is there along with the bone growth okay bone ke sath sath we are getting soft tissue growth also through the process called as mechano transduction okay we have uh, relapse is less of course agar growth growing patient hoga to relapse hoga otherwise uh, it's not that commonly seen now uh, depending on the uh, there's no limit for bone lengthening so we are limited by only the size of the distractor okay If we have a longer distractor device, we can get longer bone. Okay, so uh, there is no limit for the bone uh, lengthening. Jitna bhi hume chahiye utna hum kar sakte hain. So less device failure is there now that we usually, normally we use uh, internal distractor devices now. We don't use those pin fixation devices anymore. Okay, so the device failure is also less, and uh, there is no need for second surgical side uh, that we usually have in autogenous bone graft, iliac bone graft use karte hain. so in that we have a second surgical graft whereas here we don't have any second surgical site we we just perform the uh, surgery on the same site okay again as i told you earlier there is uh, the problem issue with the patient compliance if the patient is not uh, very compliant you're going to have to uh, go for other uh, other options other than distraction osteogenesis and of course uh, if we have a distractor device with the arm that is extra oral Okay, extra oral distractor device. No, no, not extra oral distractor device. The arm is activation arm is sticking outside. So, so we are going to uh, and this arm is going to stay outside for a longer duration, right? Three to four months, uh, it is going to be there. So there will be scarring of the tissue. Okay, so there will be scarring of the soft tissue. That's it.